Hello YouTube, Mr Mo here. What I thought I would do for you today is go through the contents of my possibles pouch, survival kit, EDC, whatever it is you call yours. I've based mine around a Maxpedition M4 waste pack. I find this to be an excellent bit of kit. Like all the Maxpedition stuff, it's as, it's as tough as boots. Here in the UK it's a bit expensive but it's well worth the money. So if you're looking for pouches etc, Personally, I would go no further and I would go straight to their websites and try and bag yourself this kind of stuff. It's, it's brilliant quality. So anyway, what is this? Like I said, this is my Possibles pouch. I've kind of built this up over the years. It's predominantly vehicle based. I've got a strap on it here that I can carry over the shoulder. I've put one of the Max Pedition sort of shoulder straps on it and the actual strap itself is made out of paracord so this addresses all the need that we would have for paracord so rather than carrying it inside the pack I've decided to carry it as a shoulder strap and there's probably a good 50 or 60 metres of paracord on this so more than enough for what you would ever need. On the end of it, if you can see that there, I've actually got it on little carabiners which goes around the strap there is a good reason for that and I'll touch upon that in a minute. So what about the pack itself? Like I said, it's about the size for a water bottle. There's a couple of little side compartments and a forward compartment. So I'll go through what I have in each one. On this side compartment I have a Silky Boy pocket saw. I find these to be excellent. It's a good size. It's it can be carried in this no problem, has an excellent handle, the teeth on it are razor sharp and this will cut most woods for most tasks. Like I say, in any survival situation you would obviously have to think about shelter building and this will certainly provide the means for you to do that, no problem. What else have I got here in this forward apartment? I've been told that these are for pens etc. But what I've got in here is a couple of different bits and bobs and this is just a ceramic sharpener. It has the edge on it for doing a straight blade, a curved blade or fishing hooks or saws. This apparently can do them all. It's an excellent little bit of kit, doesn't cost too much and it can just slip in there no problem. On the other side I have my fire steel. I choose to keep my fire steel on the outside just so I can get to it quite easily. I have it in a little piece of rubber inner tube and that simply stops it from falling out there but obviously rubber burns, burns very well. I can put some uh, tinder inside there, light it up and it'll just burn like a slow candle. So this is an excellent bit of kit again to have. I've kept the striker part on it, I think it's important to have that. Some people use the back of their knives, that's absolutely fine. I prefer to have it here. This pouch, again, like I said, this is a, a possible pouch. It's been designed so I can tackle any situation in an emergency. And should you find yourself in an emergency situation, it just might be the case that it's pouring the rain, it's wet, it's cold, it's miserable. You don't want to really go around and try and find dry tinder or that. You want to get a fire and you really want to get it going really quickly. So for this, I've got a windmill lighter. These are good. The tank here holds quite a lot of fuel and it's it's it won't evaporate, put it this way. It's not it's not like the Zippo lighters where you put fuel in and then a couple of days later it evaporates. This, once it's in, it stays in. It simply opens and goes away. Now it's coated that this will light a fire in sort of 50, 60 mile an hour winds. You know, whether you would even want to try and light a fire in a 50 mile an hour wind, I don't know, but it says you can, and for that it gets its place in the pouch. I also chose to buy it in the orange. As you can see, if you drop it, it can be easily found. So that's that's what's in there. Along beside that, I have just a normal diamond stone for sharpening my knife, which we'll come on to in a minute. And that's you know, there's many of these on the market. I choose this one because it, it suits my needs. Okay, what else have we got? On the inner compartment, what I've got is where I fold down the back cover. If I unroll that, 
this is where I keep my knife. And this is a Nordic Super Swede. This is a fantastic lockable knife. Its disadvantage is obviously that it's a folding knife, however it has a very, very good lock on it and you would be very, very surprised at the amount of tasks you can do with this knife out in the field. It is a Scandi grind, so it's, it's perfect for bushcraft, it's razor sharp and it's a fantastic knife to buy. If you can find them about, I would thoroughly recommend you purchase yourself one of these. Okay, moving on. We need, obviously in the field, we need to address water. So what I've got here is the Webtex Survivor Pure water bottle and this actually has an inbuilt filter. Now this is good for 1600 litres of water which equates to, I think it's 12 glasses a day for a year. So you're not going to run out of water. Remember we're hoping that in a survival situation we're looking at 72 hours and then hopefully we're fined. So this is this is well, well worth its, its weight alone. And that's a, a, a brilliant bit of kit. To, uh, I'll come on to that in a minute. Again, what else have we got in here? I have a Dutch pattern metal mug. Fantastic bit of kit. Goes straight in the fire, no problem. Simply put it down on the flames and it'll boil your water. What I would tend to do with this is for in a really soiled areas where the water's really quite bad, I have a millbank bag in the back sleeve here. This sleeve is designed to put a belt through but because I carry it on the shoulder strap I put my millbank bag in there. And the millbank bag is basically designed, you can fill that up from the stream and you can allow it to drip down there is a certain way you do it and I will going to do a video on that at some point in the future but basically what you do is you put that up and the water filters down at this point if you live in a really bad area you can take your filter off sit your mug underneath here that will uh, be used to steady it and it simply drips on down into the bottle collects, this takes all the organic matter out of it and then at that point you simply put your filter back on, lift it up. It says the initial use is when you pull this up you squeeze the bottle three times just to get some water coming through that filter to take anything that's sort of been sitting in there for a while out of it. And it's got a non-return valve so the bottle doesn't stick. So that covers all the water purification. And like I said I will do a video on that at some point in the future. My intention is to actually go through and do smaller individual videos for pretty much everything that I've got in this possible pouch to show you how to use it in the correct manner. What else I've got in here? I have a Heat Shields bivy bag. This is sort of the, the better one. You get the silver ones, the foil blankets. Uh, I prefer this one. It's a little bit better and it's a little bit bigger for a start but like I said the initial situation that you might find yourself in, it could be cold, wet, windy, so the best thing to do is light your fire with your windmill lighter, get into this, get the head down, when you wake up the next morning then you can start assessing the situation that you're in with regards to shelter building, planning to find food etc. So this is just a sort of one, one night option, but it's a handy bit of 